Hello. All right, so the Civil War is over, 1865, Civil War ends. The North is victorious, right? And uh, the 13th Amendment is established, and we talked about all this last time. 13th Amendment uh, abolishes slavery, okay? <clears throat> the death toll from the Civil War was huge, right? 600,000 to 800,000 people in the United States. The South is completely in shambles, uh, com been completely destroyed by the war. And we're going to get into the next phase of the history of the U.S. right after the Civil War. And this is called Reconstruction, right? It's called Reconstruction because, uh, you know, the nation is trying to reconstruct itself, right? They're trying to bring uh, both North and South back together. Uh, after the Civil War. And um, this is going to be, uh, you know, a very, very strange process because there's no, there was no playbook for this. This wasn't in, you know, there was no <clears throat> blueprint in the Constitution, like what to do if, uh, you know, states secede. You know, there was, nobody really knew what to do. And so we're going to talk about what happened. And a lot of Reconstruction uh, has to do with, uh, newly freed African Americans. What is gonna be their situation? And we're gonna talk about all of that. <clears throat> so Reconstruction, generally, uh, you know, we think of Reconstruction as lasting from 1863 to 1877. So basically from the time of the uh, Emancipation Proclamation to 1877. And we're gonna see why it ends in 1877. So first of all, after the war, Abraham Lincoln is still president, okay? And uh, he's gonna kind of come in conflict with Congress over how to bring the Southern states back into the United States, okay? Southern states, uh, you know, they're now occupied by the Union Army <clears throat> and they have no Confederate government whatsoever, it melted away. So here's Lincoln's plan. Lincoln, uh, you know, he granted amnesty to most ex-Confederates, that means they were forgiven, and he allowed each state to return as soon as 10% of its voters had taken an oath of loyalty to the United States. And they also had to approve the 13th Amendment, abolishing slavery. Congress thought that was too uh, lenient of a plan. They wanted to put in a harsher plan. So they put into place a plan called the Wade Davis Bill. Wade Davis Bill. <clears throat> this bill uh, required an oath of allegiance by a majority of each, each state's adult white men. And uh, the new governments in the South could only be formed by those who had never taken up arms against the Union. And uh, ex-Confederate leaders uh, were disenfranchised. They could not vote. Lincoln thought this was too harsh, and so he vetoed this Wade Davis Bill. So right off the bat, you, you know, uh, <clears throat> both the president and Congress, they're not really sure how to go about this. They're disagreeing on how to bring the Confederate States back. <clears throat> but then in 1865, Lincoln is assassinated. He's killed by a Confederate sympathizer, John Wilkes Booth. Um, and he's dead. Okay. Lincoln dies. He's assassinated. And so... <clears throat> Well, before we go on, here's a good map of the ex-Confederate states in gray. Uh, you know, those border states that had slavery in red, which, of course, there is no more slavery after the 13th Amendment. And, of course, the free states in blue. <clears throat> okay, so after Lincoln's death, if you remember, you know, we talked about uh, the presidential election of 1864 and how he chose as his vice president a Democrat, a Southern Democrat, in order to try to unify the United States. Well, this is gonna have a lot of consequences, especially during Reconstruction, okay? Because the presidency goes, uh, you know, if the president dies, of course, the vice president becomes president. And the vice president was this man named Andrew Johnson. He was a Democrat, not a Republican like Lincoln. And um, he was a Southern guy himself. And so he's going to be uh, sort of forgiving to, uh, you know, a lot of 
the southern states. But anyway, this Andrew Johnson here, he was, uh, you know, he considered himself a common man. He was from Tennessee. Um, but he was, he was always loyal to the Union. Right? You know, he didn't, uh, you know, he didn't join the Confederacy or cast his lot with the Confederacy. And so um, it seemed like a smart idea to put both a Republican and Democrat on the presidential ticket. But here's what happens. Okay. Johnson is going to implement his own plan, try to implement his own plans of reconstruction. Okay. Um, it's called limited reconstruction under President Johnson. Meaning he's going to, he's going to go easy on the Confederate States. Um, and he's going to allow the Southern States to almost, uh, almost restore slavery in all but name, okay? For example, in 1865, a lot of uh, the Southern states implemented what they, what's called the Black Codes, okay? These codes were basically designed to force former slaves back into plantation labor. Okay. Basically, they, they imposed severe penalties on blacks who didn't hold year-long labor contracts. Um, it set up procedures for taking black children from their parents and having them work for former slave masters. And uh, basically it took away a lot of the rights of newly freed African Americans. And, um, you know, it tried to bring them back to the plantations in order to work for the plantations. These were the black codes. So the Southern states are implementing these black codes, you know, limiting the rights and freedoms of African Americans. Um, and Johnson's okay with this. And also ex-Confederate leaders began to hold seats of power in the South. Okay. For example, uh, we talked about a guy named Alexander Stevens. He was the vice president of the Confederacy. Well, guess what? Um, Georgia voted Alexander Stevens into Congress. So these ex-Confederate leaders are now taking uh, up positions of power within the U.S. government. And again, President Johnson, a Democrat, is okay with this. But the Republicans in Congress were not happy about this, right? They're not happy about the Black Codes. They're not happy about these ex-Confederates uh, coming into positions of power in the U.S. government. And so Republicans in Congress are going to start butting heads with the president on how to reconstruct the nation. <clears throat> so you have... Under uh, Johnson, what's called limited or presidential reconstruction. And then in about 1866, the Republicans are going to try to take over reconstruction. They're going to try to take reconstruction and uh, from Johnson, basically, try to implement their own ideas of how to reconstruct the nation. And this is going to be called radical reconstruction. It's where the Republicans take over. And they're not going to be, uh, they're definitely not going to be as lenient as Johnson was. Okay, they want to punish the South. Right? They had just went to war, hundreds of thousands of deaths, and they believed the South was responsible. And they want to punish the South, almost punish the South. And, well, make sure that, you know, they can never, you know, turn against the United States again. And so they start to these Republicans in Congress try to block uh, President Johnson's programs. Okay. And they do some, they try to do some, uh, you know, they try to implement some policies that are actually beneficial for newly freed African Americans. Because, <clears throat> and we're going to talk about the situation of African Americans um, next time. But uh, in 1866, these, you know, Republicans in Congress, they established what was called the Freedmen's Bureau, right? 
It authorized agents to investigate uh, Southern abuses against African Americans. And uh, it's also set up to basically help uh, newly freed slaves because, you know, if you're a slave in the South, the 13th Amendment rolls around and now you're free. Well, what does that mean? What, how are, you know, they don't know anything else but being slaves. How are they going to adjust to this new world of being free? You're right. Are they just, uh, you know, are whites just going to be like, okay, you're free. Good luck. Get out there and, you know, do whatever. Well, it's not that easy, right? These people have no money to start their lives upon. These people, you know, they don't know what to do, right? And so the Freedmen's Bureau is going to try to help them with that, okay? And uh, if you look on your slide, this is a, uh, a southern white depiction of the Freedmen's Bureau who thought that, um, well, let's look at it, right? It's saying the Freedmen's Bureau, uh, and you'll see this kind of racialized stereotype of an African-American sitting there, uh, you know, while the government is basically just helping him, right? Saying that the Freedmen's Bureau is just going to make uh, blacks lazy by, you know, offering them help when the African-Americans should be helping themselves. And that's the way Southern whites thought of the Freedmen's Bureau, so they obviously didn't, uh, didn't like it, but it was necessary. <clears throat> now, this is all under what's called a radical reconstruction, the reconstruction of the Republicans in Congress. What they also do is, well, first of all, they implement the first Civil Rights Act in American history, the Civil Rights Act of 1866, which declared that formerly enslaved people were citizens, and it granted them equal protection of the law. You know, they could serve on courts and things like that. Well, guess what? Um, this guy, President Johnson, he didn't like any of this. He didn't like what the uh, Republicans were doing. Right? Johnson was a racist. Okay, He didn't believe in equal rights for African Americans. And so Johnson's going to start vetoing all of these acts that the Republican Congress tries to push through. Right? He vetoed the Civil Rights Act of 1866. He vetoed the Freedmen's Bureau. He's trying to make it not happen. And so Congress and the president are butting heads, right? The president thinks that, uh, you know, um, the government should be very lenient on the South and that African Americans don't need all of this, uh, these tools to help them. Well, guess what? There is, uh, you know, Republicans are running Congress and they can override the president's veto, right? If the president vetoes a specific piece of legislation, if, uh, you know, Congress can veto that veto, if there's a, you know, if they have enough majority to do so. And they did. And so Johnson vetoed both the Freedmen's Bureau and the Civil Rights Act of 1866, but Congress is able to override both of these vetoes. And so they became law. And Congress is going to take even further action. Right? These, uh, what, what we call radical Republicans in Congress, they're trying to make sure that Afri you know, African Americans in the South are given equal rights and all the tools that they need to build lives of freedom. And so what they do is they're going to pass a constitutional amendment. If you remember the 13th Amendment abolished slavery, well, they're going to pass this 14th Amendment, which uh, it basically gives equal protection to uh, all people under law, regardless of race, right? Saying that under the law, you're, uh, no matter what race you are, you're equally protected by the law, okay? <clears throat> And, you know, it put in law that, yes, African-Americans were citizenship, or were citizens, okay? And so we think, uh, when we think of, uh, you know, there were, there's going to be three main 
constitutional amendments that deal with uh, either the abolition of slavery or the condition of newly freed African Americans. It's going to be the 13th, 14th, and 15th amendments. We talked about the 13th and 14th. We'll get into the 15th here in just a bit. <clears throat> so, these radical re Republicans, they're uh, implementing all of these, uh, you know, these measures to ensure uh, the equality of African Americans. President Johnson, of course, is, try is trying to veto these things, but he doesn't have the power. He is vetoing them, but Congress, using their majority, uh, overrides his vetoes. Okay. But under the Republicans, under radical reconstruction, the South is actually going to be divided into five military districts. See on your screen here. Each of these districts was under the command of a U.S. general. Again, Johnson vetoed this act. He said, no, we, we're not doing this. But Congress, again, overrode his veto. Okay. And so, basically, we have this conflict between the president, Congress, and, um, you know, Congress is really waiting for the president to slip up so they can take him out. They don't like him. Okay. And they found that uh, they actually, uh, in 1868, President Johnson, he actually fired his Secretary of War, who was a radical Republican. And... Um, Congress is going to use this firing as, uh, you know, a way to try to get rid of Johnson, try to get him out of the presidency. They believe he's in the way of, you know, their aims of reconstruction. So after Johnson fired his Secretary of War, three days later, <clears throat> for the first time in U.S. history, uh, Congress introduced articles of impeachment against the president, right? Impeachment means that you're, uh, they believe that he committed a crime, right? He did something wrong and he's going to be put on trial. And that's what they did. They, uh, you know, the Republicans in Congress, they brought 11 counts of misconduct against Johnson. Okay. Mostly relating to infringement of the powers of Congress, right? But, and so Johnson's put on trial, right? And uh, after an 11 week trial, the Senate was actually one vote short of convicting Johnson. And if you're convicted for a crime, if you're president, you're removed from office. Well, he was one, sh one vote short of that. And so Johnson's going to continue to be president. But this is the first time in American history that president has been impeached. Okay, there's gonna be two other times Second time is going to be President Bill Clinton for lying to Congress about an affair he had. And of course, the third time just happened fairly recently with uh, Donald Trump. Right? They believed he used his powers in office to, um, you know, he basically abused his powers in office by, uh, you know, trying to get Ukraine to uh, investigate Joe Biden. But of course, he wasn't convicted, right? So neither, none of these presidents were ever removed from office. But anyway, Johnson, he was not convicted, and he, but he was the first to be impeached. And he's going to serve out his remaining term, his remaining months in office, basically in relative quiet. And so we'll stop there. Um, and we're going to talk about... Uh, the continuation of radical reconstruction and you know the ways in which republicans in congress are going to try to assist african americans um you know with rights and freedoms that they deserve but we're also going to talk about the way whites in the south resisted these changes right and they're going to do so violently right we're going to see the introduction of the Ku Klux Klan, the KKK, and other ways they're going to try to stop African Americans from voting and so on and so forth.
but we'll go ahead and stop there today. And we'll talk about the rest of reconstruction next time.